All right, ready for another video. Um, this video is a different video than normal. This is a video to recap what has happened this past year. A year ago, I um, had the double mastectomy. And a few months prior to that, I obviously found out that I had the cancer. And mom and I wanted to sit today and tell you just a little bit of a recap of everything that has happened and where where we're at today. And some of this recap um, is not something I really would like to do. I think in this process, I have truly focused on the next step, the next day, the next appointment. So to have to look back is not something I was... Um, really looking forward to, but I realize as I look back, I have learned a lot through this process. Mom has learned a lot through this oh, yes. process. And I feel like it's good to just give you a little quick rundown. So a little over a year ago at this time, I was um, had a, a mammogram and then I had a biopsy and they found that I had cancer and one of my breasts. I then took my sister, my mother, and my dad, and we sat down with a lady that kind of explained to us um, what this all means, what the possible steps were. We realized that it was actually a positive that they were going to remove that breast because that means the cancer did not spread enough that there wasn't something able to do. So at least they were able to do it. Well, at that meeting, um, there's this called, thing called the BRCA gene. And I had, um, five years prior, I had done that test. It's a saliva test. And I had realized I had the BRCA gene, which meant in my personal family, breast cancer runs in my father's side. And I, um, I knew it might be a possibility. So that being said, I, um... Five years later, I ended up finding out I did have breast cancer and they were going to remove one. My personal, my personal, and I, I say that because everyone has got their own story, their own, um, their own everything when it comes to this breast cancer journey. But I personally felt like I did not want one removed without them both. I thought they'd been together for a long time and I thought if they were going to leave my body they should go in um, both of them instead of one. That ended up being a positive because we found breast cancer after surgery in the second uh, breast as well. So that decision ended up becoming a positive decision. Because there was two separate cancers there had to be two different chemos, and that is where the um, every week for a, was it 12 weeks? 12 weeks. 12 week period. That was a hoot and a holler. Didn't make you feel very good. And then it is every three weeks for a year, one year. Yeah. So August, I will be all done with the the actual chemo part. I say all of this because I've had different people contact me and say, hey, a friend of mine, she found out she has breast cancer, one, one of her breasts, should I go ahead and tell her to take them both? And <laughs> I said, oh, that's a decision I sure don't have an answer for. I can only tell you mine personal. Um, and that's just the cancer part. Then we went into, uh, we had a, provider, and there's no reason to name names, but we had a provider for chemo. And when they, when they take the, the, um, the breast off, when they remove them both, they have tests that they do on that tissue, that tissue through this provider, um, came up missing, misplaced. I'm not sure. And that's where the advocating for yourself self came in. When that first started and we had first found out about that, 
that the sample may have been misplaced, uh, mom wanted me to advocate for myself and not go to that provider anymore. And I chose to continue to go to that provider until the day of my first chemo appointment. Mm -hmm. And I had a nurse and a doctor tell me two different things. And yet I had the, um, the, uh, port accessed. So I had this little thing dangling out of me and I had sat down and heard something different from the nurse than I did the doctor when it came to the chemo part of it. And that's when I decided mom was right and I should advocate for myself. And I asked them to remove um, the not access the port that day. And I was going to a new provider. We then went to a new provider. We did get an appointment the next day. A big fear of mine was you would not be able to get an appointment because this is not something you can just get in, but luckily we did. And we ended up getting in the next day. And that is where I had my first chemo appointment and am still in the process. And that, um, that group of people have done one, one heck of a good job and I'm very appreciative for it. Um, this whole process is not the funnest, but looking back, I had a lot of fear. I had a lot of fear of losing my hair. Did not want to lose my hair. I even talked to God a little on the side. I'm like, okay, God, I know I've got this breast cancer, but if some women don't lose their hair, so if you could go ahead and not let me lose my hair, I wouldn't mind. I had no idea it would grow back so full, so thick, so curly. I wouldn't have complained. I, I wouldn't have um, been so upset about thinking that I was going to lose it. I, uh, well, boy, I don't know. It's well, been any, a journey one day at a time. Yeah, truly, truly one day at a time. One and, day at a time, sweet Jesus. And the symptoms, there's a thing they call the chemo fog, just because they really don't know exactly what it is or what causes it. I, obviously, it's chemo, but it does make you feel a little loopy sometimes. It, um... Make you feel sick. It does make you feel sick. There's been a lot of times um, I have found Happy Meals are good. Well, first of all, my mother's cooking is the best. There's no doubt about that. But I have also found when I do get to where I um, my stomach's okay and I can eat a little something, I, I try to get a Happy Meal and <laughs> it has the apples and mom has made a vegetable soup that has been very good, but you're, you just don't feel well. And, um, the amazing thing about it is no matter, no matter how you feel, I believe this process has a whole lot to do from your neck up than it does from your neck down. Because whether you're having a good day or where you're having a bad day or whether you need a nap or you need to give yourself some grace, it's okay to do that. And I feel like my support system has um, allowed me to just remember to, to breathe and let each day happen how it's going to happen. I realize from one year to the next, I could almost be an expert in this process. <laughs> um, not to give advice, but, but for an expert for myself to let myself know that this is ever changing. And it's a process that will eventually kind of come to an end, but until then, um, if I can pick out each day one thing that I can do that gives me joy, then I feel like I'm successful. The support group that you have is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Yes. They, there 
our support teams out there, and they are just just absolutely wonderful. Yes. I would there's find. there's different things. Uh, I think on a financial aspect, I had said at the beginning, I'm not a mother, and I'm not going to sign up for for assistance and for help. <laughs> I thought I knew what this process might entail. I didn't. I didn't know the amount of doctor's visits. I didn't know the amount of toll that this would take on a person's body. That they may not quite be as active as they once was for a period of time. Um, and that's okay. I think life is ever-changing. I've had a year of this process, and it's been <clears throat> it's been quite a process. Mm -hmm. But I actually, I also, I had a friend of mine in the auction industry, and she just lost her son. And I truly believe this breast cancer has just been a journey, not yes. something that is important like that is. Because to me, that's that's a real struggle. This this is just something that is a um, 